Okay, this time I'm going to be doing the static blocks. And uh, let's see, I saved the last one, so load. I'm just calling it escape at this point, so I'll fire this up. As you can see, it's loading there. And once you have one of these rooms and you want to start editing it, you click the edit button here. This just tells you a little bit about what's in the room. Click here and you get yourself a summary. But okay, let's edit this room. And one of the most important things which you can have in a room is static blocks. That's this layer, it's kind of the default layer. And so I will fire this up. This is the new static block dialog here. Images. And this is a collection of the images which I created for the original game and I think I want some of the clouds which I had for the platforms in the weather factory. And here's the sampling of them. Let's see, dark cloud block, there's some walls here, there's the ceiling. Um, I believe that there's floors here too. I'll start with this one. When you make a static block what you can do is first you select an image. Let me see if I can find one that has some good transparency. Okay, here's a good one, the pink tile. You could see that there was um, a big splot of white in the middle. That carries over here when you select the transparent color. As you can see, the white became transparent. Of course, that's not actually what I want the cell to look like. I don't want these little pink boxes there. I want some actual clouds. So let's say that you've created a static block, but you want to change it later. You can click on this edit icon here. This one's for creating a new type of static block. This one's for editing an existing one. And let's see, dark cloud block. Go with dark cloud block three. That one since it doesn't have any white on it, it's not supposed to be transparent, so I'll just go with that. And as you can see, it changed all of them to this sort of cloud image. And let's see, I also want something for the wall. I mean, this this let me just show you what it would look like if I did put this on the wall. Yeah, not not the prettiest thing ever. So I'm going to see if I can find a good one for the wall. Let's see, dark cloud block. Let's try left wall two here. It won't let you create a static block unless you select a transparent color. If you don't want any part of it to be transparent, just pick a color that doesn't actually appear in the graphic. Okay, um, that didn't actually create the wall that I wanted, but it did create a wall for me, and it's right there. So let's make another one for the right wall. Let's try this one. Again, white and there. There's a little bit of embellishment there, but it's still recognizably a cloud. I'll add another one for the ceiling. So now we have yet another. Fill that in, and you have a room surrounded on all four sides. And let's just say that we wanted to make a bottomless pit. You can go to the eraser tool here, and you can erase a couple of these blocks, and then you got a bottomless pit here. So you want a gap in the wall, because if you go too far in any of the directions, it activates the death system. It's not just bottomless pits. You can do that, too. Same thing with the ceiling. But practically, I don't want that, so I'll just fill everything back in again. Now, one thing which you probably noticed here was blocks should be passed through. Um, in video games, basically, there are two types of platforms. Platforms that, if you're beneath them, you can jump up, and you actually jump up through the platform, but then when you land back down on top of the platform, you don't pass through it in that direction. The other type of block is completely solid, and if you try to jump up through it, you'll just bonk your head. I wanted either one of these to be available. I decided to implement that as part of this game engine, so let me see if I can make a good example of that. Uh, I think that I have something called plat tile. 
Okay, here it is, plat tile. And there's a lot of white there, and I'm going to be using that as the background color. So that it's passed through, and here we go. I'll just put this here and we'll say that it's a bunk. Okay, I guess this isn't going to mean much if I don't play through it, so I'm also going to show you how to create the start of a level. Now, in order to actually create the start of a level, you have to set the starting room. You have to decide which one of these rooms is actually going to be the starting point. And since I've only got one room, when I click st set starting room here, there's only going to be one option here. If there were more rooms, then those would appear in this drop-down list. But click OK, and it says here this one is your starting room. Okay, there's already a op window open for this room, so I'll uh, unminimize it. When you say, this is the starting room, then when you go to this Start Goal Front Widgets layer, then you'll see Level Start. This will be enabled. And I'll just put it right here. That way when you start the level, that is exactly where your character will appear. And just so that it won't complain, I'm going to create a goal as well. This goal isn't going to have a cutscene, so I'm just going to click OK. And there is the Goal button. I'll just place it a little bit more prettily there. Now I'll X this out, hit save, save it as escape again. No, I'm not going to pack it. I'm going to exit, fire up the game. Unfortunately, this takes a while. I'm going to have to find a way to make it not take a while. Not sure whether the music is coming through the microphone. Probably not. Anyway, here's Twilight. New game. Load. Escape. And as you can see, these tiles are completely solid. Can't jump up through the ceiling. I can pass through these tiles just fine. And there I am. It's very simple. So there you have it, static blocks and how to make them.